Hi, I'm Jill Webb and I run a company called Jill Webb Training. I offer a variety of training courses, including a range of first aid opportunities. And one of the things that I quite often get asked is, Jill, I feel really nervous when I've had to phone an ambulance. What if I tell them the wrong thing? Oh, it's all quite stressful. And of course, it is stressful. We don't phone ambulances every day, do we? But a few tips that I've picked up and thank you for people have shared very generously with me, particularly a customer I had who had just come away from working for the ambulance service who was particularly useful. So, the first thing the ambulance needs to know is, is the casualty breathing? Now, here's a lovely bit of homework for you. Go and watch something like 999, What's My Emergency? And you will find that you can sometimes catch a glimpse of the screens that the dispatchers are using. And they read amber and green or rag rate all the calls. Quite clearly, somebody not breathing is a red call. So that's the first thing that they need to know. And then they need some idea of the age of the casualty and what's happened. Really important here, you say what you know has happened, not what you think has happened. If you've had to surmise it, make that really clear. I found an unconscious child, he's six, I found him under a climbing frame, I think he might have fallen off. That's really, really clear and it makes the difference between what you know and what you've had to assume. The most useful thing that you can do for an ambulance, though, is to give very clear instructions about where you are. And it was really helpful to me when this person on a course who had just finished working for the ambulance service said, Jill, please tell people that the software in many ambulances is not as good as what they've got on their mobile phone. And they need to remember that. So have a think about the places you usually go. Have a think about where you live. Is yours the postcode that you put it in and you get to your house, which mine is? Or is yours a postcode that you put it in and actually you need to know a bit of a nuance to get there? Really good example, I was doing a first aid course last year for a local church and I offered as part of what I did to do the first aid risk assessment for them. It's quite a long, thin building. The old church is on the front and at the back is a bit of a more modern hall and the two are joined together. When I started doing this work, I discovered the church and the hall, despite the fact they are joined, have different postcodes. So that was something that I learned, that even two buildings joined together can have different postcodes. So really, really important that the most common places you go, you just find out what's the postcode, is there anything that I need to tell somebody coming in an emergency? You know, is there a certain way in? If you work in a large secondary school, if the child's hurt themselves down on the playing fields, you don't particularly want the ambulance coming in at the front gate and having there maybe a much better way to get to you. So that's probably one of the most important things. And is there any other useful information you can give them? You will find if you are ringing because you are in loco parentis, i.e. you're ringing about a child you are looking after in a school, a daycare setting or similar, you may well be asked some of the child's details. So it's a really good idea to get somebody finding those out for you so that you're ready to give home address and things like that. And of course, if you've watched my AED video or DFib, you will know if somebody's not breathing, Breathing, you need to be asking for advice about defibrillator. Once you've made that call, really, really important that you send somebody out to watch the ambulance. Can somebody have a high-vis jacket? I always recommend that as part of your first aid kit, as you'll know, and be stood on the road to show somebody in. Might even be a chain of two or three people. Hi, we've seen you, the casualties round there. Can you see that chap in a fluorescent jacket move round there? Anything we can do to help the emergency services get quickly to our casualty and, of course, to save their valuable time. I hope that's been useful and if you're coming on a course soon, I look forward to hearing a very high quality 999 call. Thank you.